Is my iPhone secretly recording my dreams? Does Bigfoot imply the existence of a cryptid called Big Hands? All of these questions you can find the answer to on this Paranormal Life! Hello everyone and welcome back to This Paranormal Life, the comedy paranormal podcast where every week myself and my associate Kit Greer Malvena investigate a brand new paranormal tale and decide once and for all whether or not it is true or it is false. Kit, how are you feeling today? Fantastic, Rory. Uh, we've had, um, I'm trying to think, are we in a dry spell again or how are we doing? It's been a lot of no's. <laughs> it has been a lot of no's back to back. I, I really just, intense. I do realize that we, we're, you know, we're still in this somewhat distant after. We're like a satellite that has passed by a sun after, after traveling through space for millions of miles. We just passed by a star, which was our double yes. And we enjoyed that warm glow. We are now hurtling into Get the abyss. Get ready for winter! We're hurtling into the abyss of space. Probably <laughs> eight to nine hundred years yeah. of no's coming up. Uh, I'm just worried that we don't need another kind of year-long dry spell of no's. Right. That the, the yes that we have is kind of like um, the beautiful star in the sky that came down and killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> And then there was, I think, an eternal winter that lasted 400 million years. And then another star came along. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of what it's like listening to this podcast is um, you never know when you're going to get your double yes. But doesn't that make it more exciting? It's it's like being friends with a guy who occasionally just throws his fist back like he's going to hit you. Right. And you never know whether he's going to actually throw the punch or not. And doesn't that make things kind of like, ooh, kind of exciting? Now you put it like that. I think it's, no, don't, Sorry. please. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I just did it to uh, kid. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's... Abusive. Was that actually. not exciting? No, it's abusive. You didn't I think to kind okay. of make someone think that you're going to attack them. All right. Uh, well, I won't do it again then, because I, I understand it. All right. I don't <laughs> need that in my day. So, <laughs> <laughs> although to be fair, I do think I am kind of a, I might be a safe distance across the table. I don't know if you want to. I think I can swing. I don't know. Yeah, you might actually. You might, you might have to kind of <laughs> jump across the table, which I don't put past you, but. Yeah, it, it could happen. Um, you know, we don't want to spend too much time chit-chatting at the start of an episode. We do like to dive in. But uh, what do you think about iPhone secretly recording your dreams? Is that something that you would be worried about necessarily? <laughs> iPhone secretly recording mm -hmm. our dreams. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's a common question is, are our iPhones secretly recording us? Right. So, you know, we say something and then maybe later we see an ad for that thing online or on social media and we're like oh what the hell my phone recorded me you're saying is it recording our dreams i sleep with an iphone pretty close to my pillow right and when i conk out at night i don't know where that thing goes there is there a chance that it is monitoring my sleep schedule uh i don't know if you ever tried the sleep monitoring apps that were popular kind of when the iphone first came out i have 12 now oh yeah I just want to make sure that my dreams are completely under control because sometimes they can get pretty wild. So before I go to bed, I activate my Apple Watch, my Strava, in case I'm running in the night. I <laughs> activate my Fitbit. I have my Apple uh, iPhone, an Android phone, a Huawei, all hooked up to kind of my, my bed to monitor anything. I Too have much uh, electromagnetic apps monitoring radiation. sleep talk in case I sleep talk. I have a uh, do you? I have a Pokemon Go sleep monitor, so Pikachu will electrocute me if my dreams get too weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I went on a bit of a rant there, but my dreams are pretty wild. My <laughs> dreams are pretty pretty nuts. What is the content of your dreams that necessitates this much study? I dreamt a banana was green. <laughs> And I haven't so, been able to stop thinking about it for so days. So kind of Stanford Medical School is kind of putting you under a lab. And I don't. Um, and I know what you're going to say. I know to what you're going to say. Going on. Rory, before they're yellow, all bananas are green. But <laughs> this did. banana was ripe. <laughs> I mean, the opposite of ripe. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really occur to me right away. But yeah, you are right. <laughs> this banana was so green. That I just, I had to start right. monitoring my sleep. See, what you're saying is in your, because normally in real life, when a banana is green, you wouldn't even try to open it because we've learned that if you try to open a, a green banana, no taste nice, yeah. taste bad. Taste bad. You're, in your dream, you're saying that's the conspiracy is if you <laughs> actually opened a green banana, it was perfectly right. They don't want you to know it. That you're waiting for your bananas to turn yellow, but you can eat them when they're green. They're not good, right? but that, you can eat them. That's a little life hack. I actually did read the other day, people were arguing online about whether 
the concept of checking out at a hotel is real. Yeah. There was a viral post where someone was saying, wake up, sheeple. You can just leave your key card in the room and walk out. Which, that can't be true. They've got your card details. There's like, no way. They were like, what are you checking out? I don't think that's necessarily true. Sometimes you've charged things to the room. But most times, that probably is true. I think someone once left a comment under a video I posted saying, I bet bro still checks out of hotel rooms. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, aren't you supposed to? Isn't that like but, the etiquette? But isn't a lot of times that you do it, you, you, you're you like, hey, just checking out. And they're like, great, you're all set. Right, you just hand them the key. And you're and like, like, did anything happen? They're they like, like okay. they press the, They press the space bar just to make you feel like they did something. Which is crazy because at least the way I was raised is if checkout is at 11, right. you need to be down there, bags packed. The room has been swept of all items, completely clean, left spotless. Yeah. And you're down there. 11.59, 12, <sighs> boom, checking out immediately. And if you don't, presumably poison gas fills the room. You know, I think that's yeah. what they do. That's what I assume. There's some kind of SWAT team would come and take you out. <laughs> um, but hey, maybe we are at a point now where you don't have to check out of hotel rooms. Wow. If you work in Crazy. the hotel industrial complex, let us know. That's a conspiracy. That's, you know, conspiracies these days can be damaging, hurtful, politically sensitive. That is not, that is just a good conspiracy. Is checking out real? Is it real? Until we find out, catch me in the lobby, 11 a.m., eating the greenest banana you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Kit, I'm glad that we talked about dreams at the start of this episode, because believe it or not, that is actually the focus of today's investigation. Oh. Our story today begins like all great episodes of This Paranormal Life, with a Reddit post. Username, DM me geography facts commented on a Reddit thread where people were describing the strange things that they'd experienced while struggling to sleep. But they mentioned something so unique on this thread that it set me off on a wild hunt to investigate a paranormal cryptid that I'd never even heard of before in all my years of investigating. Wow. We're gonna figure out what this thing is right after a quick word from today's sponsors. And a reminder, you can get every episode of this podcast ad-free over on patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. Now, as I said, this Reddit thread mentioned everything that people had experienced when they were struggling to sleep. Everything from strange noises to bizarre dreams and even spotting shadowy figures in the corners of their room. But this specific user's post was different. They wrote, I remember my first experience with sleep paralysis. Because I'd heard about it online, I figured out fairly quickly what was going on. My body was completely paralyzed, and my head felt like it weighed a hundred pounds. But my neck and eyes could sluggishly move from side to side. All of a sudden, I vividly heard a creepy choir of voices. Then, I saw my bedroom door creak open. Suddenly, to my left, this weird, shadowy, cat-like creature with yellow eyes was staring at me. Eventually, it starts to bite my arm. <laughs> Whoa! Which feels like a bunch of little needles sticking into me. Yikes. At this point, I am terrified because I never knew sleep paralysis could feel so real. And then, it was over. The user continues to say how bizarre the ordeal was because he swears he was awake for all of it and can remember it like it really happened. Show us the needle marks. Show. <laughs> Surely this is the point in the story where he goes, and then I woke up, and the needle marks were there. Yeah, he didn't actually say that in the post. Okay. That probably would have been uh, good proof to well, show that this did It would have been a, a good uh, thing to happen in a horror movie. This isn't a horror movie. This is real life. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have to... Uh, just take take it on face value what's happened, but still very odd, very creepy. You know, we've talked on this podcast before about sleep paralysis, and that episode covered the shadow people and the crowd favorite, the Benadryl hat man. Mm -hmm. But this user was describing something different. He was describing a cat-like figure, small and impish. <laughs> this wasn't just any sleep paralysis demon. It sounded like this Reddit user suffered an encounter with an Alp. An Alp? An Alp. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard to say. Yeah, it shouldn't be. I think because living in Europe, we're so used to saying the Alps. That's yes. the only Alp I know of. Or Alpen. 
the kind of um, healthy cereal. So this is an Alp. Interesting. This is an Alp. What the hell is an Alp? And how does it differ from the usual suspects that show up during sleep paralysis? To find out, we need to dive back into the scariest area of paranormal history, German folklore. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, anytime we dive into German folklore on the podcast, you know things are going to get pretty f***ed up. Did you know the Babadook <laughs> was a children's nursery rhyme from southern Germany? Did you know Insidious 2 <laughs> is a kid's book in, in Germany? In German folklore, the Babadook's the good guy. <laughs> He comes at the end of the story to scare off the other shit that turned up at the start <laughs> to eat the naughty children. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the last time we dived into German folklore, we investigated a guy called Father Whipper. <laughs> yeah. Who was kind of a Christmas bastard who whipped and I think <laughs> ate <Christmas> children. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. A Christmas bastard. Yeah. Were German children that bad that, that we need that we need we need a kind of Avengers Assemble cast of demons of demons and just angry men to keep the children in line? And I mean, all these stories also come from a time in German history before you know the things that kids get up to today that are bad, right? Vaping, uh, sure, spending too much time on the PlayStation e-scooters, things like that. Right. If, you know, I think now, I think we actually, now that I've come full circle, we need Father Whipper to come back and we need <laughs> the Babadook to come back because we need to get yeah. these kids off the vape. If anything, those early kids didn't deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> like what did they, did they churn butter for too long? <laughs> did they spend too much time playing in the fields? Yes, yes. Too much time down the old mill. Yeah, yes. I didn't deserve a whipping. Yes. You don't need the Babadook to turn up to teach your kid not to do that. I did. Uh, uh, actually, just the other day, I went to a museum of country life uh, in Ireland, which uh, sounds boring, pretty interesting, because people 100 years ago in Ireland, uh, some of them were still living in like mud huts borderline. Uh, so things were totally, totally different. But they had a photo up at one point, which did kind of sadly make me laugh because it was a photo of a school in like the late 1800s. Those kids looked terrified. <laughs> it, it was like, they looked like they were lined up in Squid Game. And I, I totally forgot until that moment. I was like, oh yeah, they were getting the shit beaten out of them at school. Oh yeah. It's like, it was horrible. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was a hard time to be a kid back then. Going to high school for these little Victorian children was like basically getting drafted for the WWE. <laughs> at any point, a teacher could kind of kick down the door and just run in and suplex you through a desk. <laughs> You just really didn't know what was going to happen. The teaching assistant is like a commentator. It's like, oh shit, it's the, it's the principal. He's doing the Rey Mysterio 619. Oh, to a little Timmy. <laughs> There's so many tables. It's like a table, ladders, and chairs match. <laughs> Why is the janitor at this high school so jacked and in a leotard? <laughs> He's hitting kids with a, a ladder. <laughs> well, in German folklore, this creature, the Alp, or the Nachtmare. <laughs> no points for guessing what that is in English. So, <laughs> so it's only in English that he's not called the Nightmare. <laughs> the Nightmare. This is insane. He's a cat. How can he be called the Nightmare? He's not a cat. He's not a cat. He's something very different. Uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, I know because he's needles in his mouth. We don't know what the Nachtmare means. It could mean anything in German. It could mean little guy. It could mean pleasant <laughs> dream dweller. You know. It could mean tomcat, alley cat, any yeah. of the above. Uh, but it is an evil entity that has the power to trap its victims in a state of sleep paralysis. While most of the entities that people see during sleep paralysis are shadowy, blurry, and translucent individuals, the Alp is real. He's real. This little son of a bitch is a haggard little demon man that is often depicted with a spiked head. Sorry, he's a man. I thought he was a cat. You're gonna understand when I show you a picture, okay. okay? You just have to let me get through this little chunk of description. He has matted fur or, depending on the individual, tattered little clothes. Okay. Those who are unfortunate enough to encounter this thing are stuck, paralyzed in bed forced to watch helplessly as this creature enters their room and sits on top of them. Mm. Then he enacts his Pokemon-style special attack that is known as the Alpdruck or Elf Pressure. 
<laughs> Whoa, that is a Pokemon move. Yeah. Rory, can we get a kind of Pokemon red, yellow or blue style cry for that Pokemon? In the sound effects? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> I was hoping for you to. Oh, me to do it? <laughs> Okay, I That's like that. It sounds like. Elf pressure, damn. Yeah. Um, this is currently, I just want to say before we get to elf pressure, up to now, this is, uh, I'm not saying it's not real, but this is uh, very common in the wheelhouse of um, beings from night terrors and yeah. sleep paralysis is they often sit on the chest. They affect the breathing. P pinning you down to the yeah. bed, yeah. Now here's the worst part of all. According to the legend, this creature can not only paralyze its victims in bed, but once it's there, it can enter your dreams. In fact, many people believe that if one night you have a particularly traumatic or stressful dream, the odds are that an alp was in your room that night. You just never woke up to see it. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that would make a lot more sense for why this thing might be called the, now I don't speak German, but the Nachtmare. We don't know what that means. It could mean anything. I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume for now it's nightmare. Uh, Kit, here's the moment you've been waiting for. Would you like to see a picture of this guy? I might live to regret it, but go on then. Now, I. Before I do show it to you, of course, when I say picture, I mean a painting from 1802. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's the only kind of photographic evidence we're going to be working with today. I assumed it was not a, a photograph shot on a Canon 5D. <laughs> All right. Here is the Nachtmare known as the Elf. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. He's weird, isn't he? Oh, oh. Right, you gotta just you can't just make noises. You have to describe what you're seeing. Oh, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look right, at it I'll anymore. No, no, let's show it to me. I need to describe it. <laughs> oh, no, don't keep making no, noises. No, come on, keep it. Uh, All right. That's a nasty little smile he's got. He's yeah. very happy about sitting on this woman's chest. Yes, that's what he is doing. There's a there's, this is a painting of a woman lying in bed, presumably asleep, and on her chest is a. You see what I mean? It's like a little guy, but I, a little I want cat. us to do a little. Let's do a little competition. Me and you are going to try and recreate that pose for the viewers on YouTube. Down the line on the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna. <laughs> he's 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 like he's got his thumb <laughs> in his in his teeth. He's like <laughs> he's way too into it. He's, he's doing like, like a little pose. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, you can see why people would say, look, he does kind of look like a cat because he is furry and he has the kind of pointy cat ears, but it is a little guy. Yeah, it's... It's very scary. It's a little man. Um, I get it. I get it. That is... I mean, I'll clap that out. Fair play to that artist for creating really one of the most disturbing paintings I've ever seen. Yeah, properly terrifying. Um, and also kind of insane to think that Whatever this thing is, it's allegedly been around since the early 1800s. And even at that point, it had been around long enough that people were able to recreate it in paintings. Yeah. So this thing is going back a long time. Now, I know that an old painting from the 1800s isn't enough to convince you today, Kit, that this creature is real. So how about a first-hand testimony of an encounter with an Alp that was emailed in by one of our very own listeners. Oh, shit. Damn, that email didn't hit the auto-delete in our inbox. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, this did come in on the 11th of October, 2022. <laughs> okay. So we're a little late, yeah. sure. We don't know if they're still listening, but hopefully they are. Uh, this email was sent in by Trenton L. And they said, hey guys, I've been a longtime listener and I absolutely love listening to the podcast. You guys are hilarious. Oh, this is embarrassing, actually. I've included a lot of this stuff. You're the yeah, best you, part you of can, my week. Yeah, you can cut the kind of platitudes. Yeah. Rory's my favorite. That's weird he threw that in there. Uh, Rory's episodes always seem to have the most evidence. He Kit ones are fine. He hey, hey, don't hey, he take the iPad. He, I can see he didn't write that. He so. meant it, though. I could feel like, it's Sometimes it's about reading between the lines. Yeah, not, so if I stare really uh, not hard usually, enough, I can... kind of not the point of a script, though, is it? <laughs> I think he, he's just inferring <laughs> Don't a lot of read stuff. what's on the page, I would say. Oh, here's a weird one. F kit. That one's really buried in there. Did he give any reason for why? That's, uh, no, just threw that in there randomly. So a bit that's A bit strange for 50% of your favorite show of all time to be, <laughs> f to be f that bit. There's a whole section where he calls you the Nachtmare. <laughs>
in an otherwise pleasant dream. Uh, Trenton said, when I was about four or five years old, I was living in my grandpa's house. I had just been put to bed and I was about to sleep for the night when suddenly I had the urge to look at the foot of my bed. To my horror, I saw two giant, almost glowing eyes staring back at me. I could only describe it as a blackish, green, almost goblin-looking creature. It had skin that looked like it was sitting at the bottom of a lake. Ugh. Then, as I was frozen with fear and confusion, he showed a big, glowing, toothy smile from ear to ear. Uh-oh, we know who that sounds like. Hello, did he put a little thumb in his mouth as well? <laughs> a little cheeky thumb? He say, goo goo gaga, bitch. <laughs> I'm back. He <laughs> then very slowly ducked under the foot of my bed. I was suddenly released from my state of paralysis and ran as fast as my little legs could carry me to my parents' room. But of course, when my dad went in to check for the little monster under my bed, it was no longer there. Isn't it crazy? Like, don't you just know what that, what he felt like at that age? You know, whenever something like that happens and then you just get the, you're like, you, you, do, you, you get, get the freak get, out. You, you get the freak. Well, oh, yeah. What is that? What is that whenever you just like, it's like when people say you get into bed after, you know, a long day and then you just do a little, you, a you little, freak, a little dance. freak out. Yeah, the little goblin dance. Cause it's like, with, if the bed is like fresh and cold and you're just yeah. like, oh, I just got to do a little freak dance. And this is the bad version of that. Like if someone says, oh, there's a spider on your neck. You do the, you, you do, do the, the weird little, dance. yeah. So I'm just imagining as soon as that thing just under the bed, you're like, get the fuck do the dance. Dad! Gotta go to my dad. What's worrying is the email goes on to say, this isn't even the freaky part yet. They wrote, I'd almost forgotten about this experience as I am now almost 19 years old. But my youngest brother, who is six, went to stay the night at my grandpa's house and came home with a familiar tale. He was staying in the same room that I had stayed in. He came home and described seeing a green goblin with glowing eyes and a big smile that beckoned him to come to him. Oh dear. I felt my face turn pale as he described what he had seen. My dad now believes that I truly saw something that night, for I had never told anyone about my monster except for my parents. Ah. Even more recently, I'd had a conversation with my uncle. Somehow we got onto the topic of him as a child living in that house. He lived in the same room and he described seeing something in the room that made him never want to go back in. Oh, shit. After some convincing, I got him to describe what he saw. He described the same monster that me and my brother had seen. Wow. You know it's bad when you, when you got to wait till you're 18 and your dad pours you a whiskey yeah. and says, Let me tell you, son, I think you're old enough now to know the truth. About the Nachtmacht. Yes. I mean, investigate the granddad. Right. Because not only is it only appearing in the guest room of his house, <laughs> he keeps putting people in there. Am I reading this right? He put the kid, the dad, the uncle, <laughs> this dude's baby brother, he keeps trying to feed them to the goblin <laughs> in the guest room. Well, you see, son, I made a pact. <laughs> I made a pact 70 years ago to feed the beast. <laughs> <laughs> to feed the beast with the dreams of the innocent. Isn't this crazy? I can't believe that we missed this. Wow. In our email box. Unreal. But what's really interesting is the, the email ends with, please help me out here. I need to find out some information on what this thing is and what has been haunting that room. I have no clue what this is or what it's called or if other people have had experiences with a similar cryptid. <laughs> please, I'm going to be sleeping there tomorrow night. Please, I need your help now. It is two years late. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, yeah. We did get some follow-up emails. Um, <laughs> I, and got, I got turned into an alp. Yeah. I got turned into, if, once you, he bites you, you turn into an alp. <laughs> they didn't, that wasn't really depicted in the 1802 painting. <laughs> I am a goblin now. What are your thoughts about this kit? This is a pretty terrifying story to receive. I mean, we should be licensing this email to A24 for exclusive distribution of the horror movie that yeah. has been just described. This is ticks all the boxes. You know, we have the initial sighting. We have the corroboration of the brother, the younger brother seeing it. And then it 
kind of being buried in your subconscious um, in secrecy for years because no one would believe you, then it later becomes apparent that not only has it been seen many years before, but by your own family members yeah. who also have been trying to forget. Yeah. Uh, it's like, how's he getting about? F for any listeners playing kind of TPL bingo, you can now, you're, we're about to cross out the square that says Kit brings up Carl Jung's archetypes. Uh, <laughs> but it's time to bring up Carl Jung's archetypes. Only quickly, but, you know, this was the idea that throughout human evolution, we, we share the same brain. Our brain has been anatomically modern now for a quarter million years. Our brains are perfectly evolved and incredibly similar to one another for where we are now in the world. And we have, he believed, encoded in our brains basically certain human experiences because we've, our brains have been evolving for millions of years. Right. Um, and uh, it's a little like our investigation into the tarot cards. The major arcana of the tarot are archetypes, the world, the devil, uh, the king, um, defeat, death. These are all things that even if you were born onto a desert island and you were the only person there, we would somehow in just understand inherently right um, and it's possible there's even creatures embedded into that you know we have an embedded intrinsic fear of snakes spiders certain things um and i think we see that when people have visions or dreams we all around the world we dream of similar things it's possible that some kind of creature like this is buried in our subconscious that we all have access to the nachtmare <laughs> that he would that maybe that was a little thing running around a hundred thousand years ago terrorizing humans right and now we're all still scared of it in our brains uh but it's also possible that as discussed like the tall hat man like uh the shadow people this is a creature of across the veil that they actually exist because that's a terrifying possibility that they actually exist somewhere now. still do in our dreams and in our subconscious you know this idea of having knowledge passed down for generations you know uh, my controversial take is uh, that's how they get you. That's how they keep you in line. Huh? Is by having those little thoughts planted in your brain that's like, oh, oh, don't eat that berry. That berry's poisonous. Why don't they want you to eat the berry? Huh? Because it's poisonous. Maybe, I, maybe mm -hmm. that's the most delicious berry of all. But if your dad tells you the berry's poisonous, don't you trust your dad, you know? I don't trust my dad as far as I can throw him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's a separate issue. <laughs> And I'm actually finding it pretty hard to throw them because I'm tripping off the berries that I had for lunch. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, question everything, even your own thoughts, all right? What if green bananas are delicious? Yeah. Have you had one lately though? What if- They're not that good. Here's, here's the thing, what if fire is cold? Have you ever touched it before yeah. with your face? No, not my face. Maybe just touch it with your face. No, don't. Please don't, don't do any of that, listeners. What if we put a boat in the desert? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is a thousand years of human engineering telling me that a boat has no place in the desert? Why? What happens if we put it there? Will it go to the moon? Right. These are the kind of questions we need to be asking people and, and doing ourselves. The sad thing is this is so close to being an inspiring TED talk, but it's just, it is just bad. But like you could rework if you change the examples you're giving. Right. There was is it, an inspirational message in there somewhere. Was there one of them that spoke to you necessary? Was it the banana one? It was I could none of them. That. Not the banana or the boat or the flame. God, no, not the flame on the face. Okay. So not the fire one. All right. Was there anything I else? was thinking like, more like, challenge or preconception you know like yeah you know so so what if someone says it's impossible to go to the moon well you know what they did it okay they yeah did it. cool right and so something you know like shit i don't know uh we hear about, don't a, talk a, about a banana we again. hear about electric eels why don't we electrocute other animals and see what yeah, happens but, mm. it's just that i you wouldn't need to be a biologist to know that <laughs> they don't electrocute the eels <laughs> right you, like you must know that but could we, you know, okay, so uh, what if a boomerang never comes back? <laughs> just watching Green. Rory in Hyde Park, just like <laughs> crying, sweating, throwing a boomerang, desperately trying to get it to just stay away every time that it curves around. He's like, no, no, it's destiny. How much are they paying you? <laughs> I throw it as hard as I can and just start running. And it's chasing me down like a fighter jet. I can't get away from this thing. Just in case we have more listeners out there who are struggling with an Alp or want to know how to deal with an Alp if one turns up in their life, we are going to 
learn a little bit more about it, and crucially, how to fight against it. Right after a quick word from today's sponsors. Now, believe it or not, Kit, the Alp doesn't just want to feed off of your dreams. This little son of a bitch just generally likes causing old-timey chaos. For example, Alps are also known to tie knots in horses' hair, known as fairy knots, just to kind of piss off their owners. Uh, they also sneak into your house at night and turn your milk sour. <laughs> well, okay. I just think, yeah, maybe you had it for long enough. That so, so I, I just some of these things I just don't nope. know if it's always the nightmare. That one is definitely the nightmare. That okay. wasn't me. Uh, if you're, this is one relevant to you. Okay. As a parent, if you're changing a baby's dirty diaper. Do not leave the room afterwards, or the Alp will sneak in, find the dirty diaper, and put it back on the baby. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Damn. Kind of gross. That is disgusting. <laughs> I will say, don't love the fact he's just always around. You yeah, know, we, we, I, I we graduated I don't, from dreams. Yeah, I don't, I don't love the idea that like I, like I have to manage my own behaviors because he just lives with me now. Yeah. Like, I, like this is like saying, like, don't leave breadcrumbs lying around or the cockroaches will get them. It's like, cool, how about I kill the cockroaches? How about I get them? How about I get a man to come and fumigate the house so the cockroaches are gone? Yeah, I don't know if there's something that can deal with nightmarish creatures from German folklore. Right. But this is a thing with creatures from German folklore <laughs> is they, they kind of are known for doing one thing in particular, but yeah. then the more you read, you're like, oh, they stick around. Yeah. It's kind of like, we did a whole episode where we were like, oh, this this guy's called um, Christ Kindle, um, who's known for punching kids every Christmas. Um, and he's there in the summer, too. <laughs> it's like, okay, so he's not just a Christmas demon. Yeah. He, he kinda, exists all year round. He indulges round. in a bank fraud during the <laughs> summer. It's like he, they're always doing so much worse shit than you even realize. Right. That actually seeing them during your, while you're sleeping is maybe the best time to see them. Yeah. They're also known to milk cows dry, Oof. take horses for joy rides at night, make them run until they're exhausted. Yeah, the, these are very. This is very 1800s activities. Yeah, I, I would like to to know what they get up to today. Right, if there's an equivalent, he'll take bird scooters on joy rides. You know, instead. Yeah, use your laptop until the battery's at like two percent. Oh yeah. So hey. you like wake up and you're like, oh, it's dead. You know. That's one I could believe. That's, I I'm yeah. oftentimes go to my laptop thinking I'm going to take this to a cafe because I'm so certain it has 85 to 90% battery. Right. 2% battery. I'm, That's the Alp. You're, you're kidding me. That's the you're Alp. Kidding me. I'm telling you. Uh, occasionally, he's also known to crush small farm animals like geese and chickens to death. Ooh. <laughs> right. All right. A little yeah. intense, little twist. Yeah. In my head, I like to think that one day he was on a farm and he saw a goose and he was like, yo, I want to know what a goose dreams of. Hmm. And he like kind of crawled up, sat on the goose, crushed it. And he was like, oh shit, they're actually not as strong as humans. I The elf pressure was a bit too strong this time. <laughs> elf pressure! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> The goose explodes. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, dude. He shouts it like a Digimon. Um... <laughs> I mean, I can't blame him. I also would like to know what a goose dreams of. I Bread? Thought, I thought you were going to say he saw a goose. was like, what does a goose dream of? Saw how horrifying goose dreams were and was like, kill it, kill it now. Right, <laughs> punches it in the throat. Uh, that's also an option. We don't know. Now, I know what you're thinking. If this guy is really causing all of this mischief, how is it so hard to catch him? Half of the shit you don't even have to be asleep for. Yeah. Well, it turns out the Alp might be hard to spot because the legends say that this creature also has the ability to shapeshift. Okay, okay. That's right. Using a small hat known as the Cap of Concealment, this Alp <laughs> is able to transform itself into other animals, such as cats, pigs, snakes, and even mice. All right, Harry Potter. Okay, he's got... The Hat of Concealment. <laughs> right. Very good. Now, you'd, you'd think this would make him impossible to detect, but no matter what form the Alp takes, he's always wearing the tiny hat. <laughs> <laughs> Which completely ruins the point of transforming in the first place. Yeah, not that concealing. Not that concealing. Yeah. Be better to just start meowing. Like, he looks close enough to a cat that he could just meow. 
<laughs> and people were like, oh, that's an ugly cat. It'd be, it'd be funny if you kind of saw him, spotted him one day, and then poof, he disappears. And you just hear the echoey voice of just like, I have transformed, formed, formed. You'll never know, no, which one yeah. I am, am. It's like, are you the bumblebee with the hat? <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, he tries oh, shit. to get away. Because <laughs> I see three bees in the kitchen right now and only one of them has a little hat on. <laughs> Looks can be busy. Looks can be dizzy. <laughs> be so, so said. Looks can be deceiving. You're a bee. You're a f***ing bee. So you are a bee? <laughs> I meant to say deceiving. <laughs> Shit. He transforms again. He's like, okay, now you'll you'll never know, but I know you want to figure out. Yes, wouldn't that be mice? It's like you're a mouse. <laughs> oh, shit! I need to stop making puns for the animal I am. <laughs> you'll never know, moo. I might be. <laughs> he transforms again. Oink! All right, so you are a pig, because the pig is enormous and it has the biggest f-ing hat I've ever seen. It's a ten-gallon hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 10 gallon hat. At least transform into something fast because I'm going to catch you. It looks like <laughs> Pharrell at the Met Gala. <laughs> the size of his hat in relation to its head. <laughs> it's true. Whatever he transforms into is still wearing the hat of concealment. I mean, I wasn't on board at first, but actually I do like this kind of Hogwarts ass uh, kind of it's kind of cute little grey area this feels uh, interesting that he has it's almost as if he's not magic in, in and of himself but he has a magic prop he's got yeah 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 well look I didn't just bring this up for fun to make a little laugh about it cause kid I'm about to blow your mind right now yeah think about this ladies and gentlemen listening to the podcast okay we have a paranormal creature that appears during sleep paralysis yep that can shift into any form, and whatever form it takes, is wearing a hat. Oh, you don't think? Could it be the same creature that we've investigated before? Could the tall hat man and the alp be one and the same? Why is it that every demonic figure, weird thing we see while we're in a state of sleep paralysis has a f-ing hat on? Yeah, so we now have to go back through the This Paranormal Life catalog of, of cryptids and creatures and anyone who's got a hat we need to be putting them on this is like when they invented like dna forensics in the 80s or some shit and they were like oh shit we can solve every crime that's ever happened right Uh, we need to now go back through the archives flick through the little folders and look for anybody who had a hat i mean and look at them a little different we're bad detectives if we couldn't have spotted that pattern (laughs) up until this point we should have noticed every paranormal creature had a hat on in the pictures (laughs) Uh, This whole theory is only extra interesting because we actually got an email about this in 2021 from Richard A, who said, the German Alp bears a striking resemblance to the Hat Man. Now, for those who don't know, the Hat Man is usually seen wearing a fedora or a wide brimmed hat, and it's often described as a tall figure with red glowing eyes emanating an aura of malevolence. Like the Alp, the Hat Man is often seen while in a state of sleep paralysis. Could it be that the Hat Man and the German Alp are one and the same? This theory was sent to us three years ago. I don't mean to blast anyone's dick off, Whoa, but okay. what about the MIBs? <laughs> oh shit. I'm sorry, oh, shit. but men with hats shutting down believers of the paranormal? Oh my God. They're one of the only things in our in our world, our purview, that have hats. Yeah, worrying if you're talking to a guy in a black suit, sunglasses and a hat, who tells you to stop investigating the paranormal, and then he transforms into a bee <laughs> and flies away. Yeah. You're like, well, that just raises more questions and I'm definitely gonna talk about this. Yeah, he you like- shouldn't have done that. He's like, I didn't mean for you to see that. I was supposed to be around the corner before I transformed <laughs> into a bee. You're like, all right, I can't unsee it now. <laughs> There's something so funny about a really intimidating guy just being <laughs> standing in your doorway and saying, if you know what's best for you, you will forget what you saw in the skies that night, or there could be dire consequences. <gasps> if you see us again, you'll know you made the wrong choice. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>
face. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a puff of smoke disappeared on the horizon. Ooh. Yeah, like I was kind of intimidated right up until that last point of all creatures. Yeah, I'm imagining. Y-O-B. I'm imagining like just in general, MIBs traveling in the year 2024. Oh, f- MIBs? Oh. oh my god! Am I honeybees? That's the conspiracy! It's a conspiracy! <laughs> oh, oh my god! It's all coming together. Holy shit! The MIBs famously love honey. <laughs> MIBs uh, getting around in 2024. If you know what's good for you, you will stay away. This is your final warning. Okay, yeah, it sure is. They go to walk away. And then you kind of like twitch the curtains later on in the evening. And the <laughs> MIB is still standing out there like on his phone. And you're like, hey, do you uh, do you need a ride? No, my Uber. It's, uh, the app is, uh, wait, the last dr- driver canceled. I'm trying right. to get, oh, I guess I could do Uber X. I could give you a lift. No, it's no problem. It's fine. Oh. Don't worry about it. I've got a buddy nearby. He could maybe swing by I've got after a pickleball. If I can remember my <laughs> zip car password, I could probably get a ride. Can I get the password for the Wi-Fi? <laughs> I'm on 3G over here. Now, luckily, most of these old-timey cryptids that we investigate have weaknesses and ways to beat them. So without further delay, here's how you can protect yourself from the ancient German sleep paralysis demon known as the Alp. First off, you need to make sure your bedroom is tidy. According to the legends... All oh, right, I think I see where this line of advice is going to be. Yeah. Do I need to be a good boy as uh, well? You need to eat your vegetables. Okay. You need to go to bed on time. Okay. Uh, no, this is this is uh, the, only the first one that kind of lines up with our demon-created to discipline children okay. kind of theories. Uh, but it said uh, a clean room is less likely to attract an alp implying that, you know, a a clean room is a reflection of your stable mental state. Ah. So a tidy bedroom means your dreams should be less delicious to an Alp. Mm. Because they like nightmares, they like stressful dreams, traumatic stuff. If they're walking into a pristine bedroom, they're like, oh, this it's going to be on lockdown, that brain. Yeah, this guy's boring. Yeah, he's probably dreaming about spreadsheets. Right. So that's one way to keep him away. Another tip is to keep a broom under your pillow, which I'm sure has some relevance to his lore, but it really just sounds like the old-timey version of keeping a loaded gun by the bed. Right. You're just gonna hit him with the broom if he turns up. Or in Rory's case, your autographed Chipper Jones baseball bat. Right. You gotta keep that one on lock, just in case a little Alp shows up, and then guess what? That's just kind of general home intruder advice, though. I don't think that's specific (laughs) to the Alp. Right, yeah. Um, you can lock your doors. Uh, that's right. another good one. That'll keep them out. Um, just keeping, yeah, a, a knife kind of in the bed with you. You know, I'm so... Don't sleep with a knife. I've told you this before. Or that, a gun. You know, my, my dreams are so wild and crazy, hence all the sleep tracking stuff, that I just sleep with like 20, 30 weapons loose in my bed at night. What? Just so that if... Not even if, when something gets into that bedroom. I don't even have to think. I just put my hands to my side, grab whatever whatever weapons are beside me, and start swinging. Wow, so dangerous. You have cuts all over your body as well. That's that's one of the problems, sure, with, with the plan, is that, yeah, you get nicked a, a few times. Yeah, sleep, yeah, sleeping with 16 shuriken <laughs> at your feet. Yeah. Yeah, my therapist says they actually might be causing the bad dreams. And if I actually got rid of the weapons... My dreams might be nicer. Yeah, I've been dreaming that I've been walking on a bed of nails for weeks now. Yeah, and that like demons are like poking me with a little yeah. pitchfork in the depths of hell. And I'll kind of wake up sometimes and, and um, you know, one of my shuriken is just right in the side of my belly. Yeah. Some Germans recommend a bowl of salt near your bed, which is a thing in the world of the paranormal, we know. Drawing salt lines and standing inside of salt circles is said to protect people from spirits and entities. So a little salt could go a long way in this situation. Interesting. Or, at the very least, throw it in his eyes and then use aforementioned broom to kind of take him out. Yeah, sure I can. Other people believe that you can avoid the Alp by sleeping on your stomach. Apparently, if you're sleeping in this position, it's harder for the Alp to, for lack of a better word, mount you. Yeah. (laughs) I don't... With a little thumb in his mouth. Now that you've kind of said the word mount i don't love leaving my butt exposed (laughs) to the alp i just don't know what his deal is 
Yeah, I'd rather him mount my butt. Yeah, that's I don't okay. even finish that sentence. Pause. Yeah. Luckily, this isn't a problem for me because I only sleep in one position and it's the goat sleep position. Sorry, do what you Sorry, sleep like a goat in, no, standing up? <laughs> as in the greatest of all time. I don't sleep like on my hands and okay. knees like a goat. It's the lying on your side, uh, one hand under the pillow, then one leg at a right angle and then the other one long. Yeah. And you're kind of lying on your belly a little bit. And if you mix up the game, I don't trust you. If you're like, I'm going to sleep on my back tonight. No way. I don't I don't believe that for a goddamn second. Do you mix it up? Or sleep, some people sleep, yeah, face down. Isn't that weird? I, I feel like I mix it up all the time. What? Probably mostly sleep on my side, but uh, I definitely mix it up sometimes with a, it's whatever mood you're in. Uh, sometimes I'll just throw in, a, yeah, just straighten your back. What I call the businessman sleep. <laughs> Because <laughs> you just got to get straight up like Dracula. Right. Um, or uh, certainly face down, even head under the pillow. Sometimes mm. if, if you, you know, maybe there's a bit of uh, light bleeding in from the outside, whether you're in a hotel room or, or somewhere else. Um, that's, 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 I call that the lights out. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, there's a number of different ways. Kind of fetal position if I'm feeling sad. If I'm yeah. crying. You mentioned on a recent episode that you and Danny are separated now. So I yeah. assume it's mostly the fetal position. Yeah. yeah, you know, I don't think it's connected, but I do think since the settlement, yeah, it's been nonstop fetal <laughs> position, yeah. Sometimes I do lights out because all the light's gone from my life. Yeah. So I kind of just to match the eternal darkness I feel during the day, I'll just put a little pillow over my head. And then yeah. if I scream, no one can hear it either. So it's yeah. like a nice little treat. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, oh, I don't even need to, you know, I, some, I was joking, some people scream way, into a so pillow. <laughs> I'm not joking. Sometimes I scream into a pillow. Like people so, do that in the movie and stuff, but like I've screamed so much. I it's just all that comes out is a whisper anyway. So that's handy. I don't I don't need to do the pillow thing anymore because I just scream and it's just <sighs> <sighs> Yeah, that's kind of dark. I hate myself. <sighs> no, I was kind of, I was doing like a joke that I didn't realize this was actually a true story. I was doing like a little bit. So you should try sleeping um normally just trying sleeping normally for a while because then you might actually have good dreams and be well rested and then you might be able to deal with the complications of the divorce a little better during the day. I just think, I just like working. Now, I just love working now. So, because I think like, you know, whatever, my life is a nightmare. My dream, my <laughs> dreams are nightmares. My nightmares are nightmares. But like work is work. Work's always there. <laughs> work is always there. Work can't leave you unless you leave me. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Unless you leave That's me fun. too. <laughs> unless you say... Like my wife did. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm not going to say it. So don't get weird about it. So it's fine. It's not. What the f*** in your script? Are you going to say, I don't want to do no, this No, I'm not going to say, give me the script back. It's totally <laughs> fine. It's, it's totally fine. Okay, it wasn't on there. <laughs> uh, that's just a few ways to uh, defend yourself against an Alp, for example, if you're suffering with one. But look, I know that some of these protection methods are a little outdated, okay? So I did some research myself about how to protect your dreams from the paranormal. And interestingly, there's a lot of theories and approaches out there. Whether it's spells, prayers, ghost hunting equipment, there's a lot. I found a website that claims that crystals can protect your dreams from evil spirits. So what did I do? I bought a shit ton of crystals. Did you? I did. Wow. So first off, I got this quartz bracelet. Okay. Uh, so I can easily just slip that on during the night. So if any sleep paralysis demons or the Alp kind of come for me, mm. I've already protected with my bracelet right here. Did, great. Did you get me one? Uh, I got this necklace. I got this great necklace Amazing. here. Did you give me a quartz uh, bracelet? Because if the quartz bracelet works really well, <laughs> I feel like I could do with one. This is a garnet crystal necklace, which actually kind of helps reinforce and protect your dreams and give you sweet dreams during the night. That's great. Yeah. Did you get me one of those? I got this one too, actually, which is kind of kind of is like- an, know, or? It's got a few crystals on a bracelet. It's yeah. kind of like the infinity stones of crystal protection. Wow, and that one is for- So anyone me? who wears this bracelet is absolutely okay. protected 100%. And I know I already have two here, the necklace and the bracelet, but yeah. I think double protection. Oh. Now I'm completely covered. Right. Totally safe. Okay. So you've got, to be clear, one, two, three different layers of crystal protection. No one's getting in here. No yeah. one's getting, this is Fort Knox. Can I get Knox. one? Uh, I actually did. Because I've just got a Timex Iron Man plastic watch. That's I don't not going to help that, you. Do you think that would, it's got, hey, it's a quartz battery. 
It can, in, the, in, the, in the watch, that might, does no, this tiny piece of quartz, would that do it? You can use your watch to figure out how long the demon was in your dreams. <laughs> it's not going to protect you from them. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, new record, two hours. Yeah. Awesome. It's like, yeah, the uh, four hours and 10 minutes, the demon ran a marathon <laughs> uh, in my brain last night, just did a loop. Uh, don't worry, Kit. I bought you a crystal as well so you could protect your dreams. I know, oh. as I said, you've been having some bad ones recently, so I yeah. made sure it was a big one. Oh. There you go, bud. Whoa. Okay, this looks badass as well. And yours look really cool, so let me... This one in particular is, uh, it's a crystal penis. I believe it's a six inch crystal N penis. No, really? Yeah. Really? So oh. before you go to bed, yeah. you're going to want to just two hand that puppy and maybe, maybe we could protected. swap. Maybe one of yours, because you you could still have three. So maybe I take one because I don't. Mine I don't, are fine. I don't, I don't love holding it. Um, oh, okay. Hey, hey, I'll take. Uh, no, I'll take it back then. Well, let's not take it back. Enjoy your bad dreams. No. So, all right, but just maybe I could put it like under the nightstand or somewhere someone's not going to see. Too I could late. Get the it needs to be right really? up, right up by your head. <laughs> this thing needs to be right there, <laughs> okay. right there when you're sleeping. Yeah. But if you don't want it, I'll take it back. Yeah, okay, maybe you like, take it. The jury's still out whether or not crystals can help protect your dreams. I guess I'm doing that experiment alone because Kit's too afraid to two-hand my white crystal penis. All right. This brings us to the end of our investigation into the Alp, the German sleep paralysis nachtmare demon. Uh, Kit, what are your thoughts today on this case? Uh, it is a tricky one. We've, we've, As we've discussed, we've We've talked about many different kind of variations on this theme before. Things that come up during sleep paralysis, sleep terrors, and it's a they're pretty fascinating because it does go so far back in time. It's not a modern phenomenon whatsoever. Just because we've talked about it on Reddit, it's been documented for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. But it 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 does get very dangerously close to that line of the paranormal sand, which is when things happen around sleep. That's always a tough one. Yeah, when things happen around sleep. Because normally we want to prove things in the waking world. Yeah. And if something happens in your sleep, generally we say that to be not real. Uh, but R these right. are creatures like Freddy Krueger who kind of test, push the boundaries of what is considered real. Yeah. It, it's like saying that there, you, you see a creature every now and again called Jeremy the Drinking Goblin. Yeah. And whenever you have a, a 40 ounce of Jack Daniels whiskey, I become Jeremy the Drinking Goblin. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, yeah, because you're seeing him or becoming him in a condition that's not reliable. Yeah, no one's you know? ever going to believe you, unfortunately. So seeing something, a paranormal creature, when you're very sleepy, that's also a little bit mm, blurry. Now, in the case of our friend Trenton L, I assume short for Trenton Longitudinal, uh, he... That was interesting because it was corroborated by other people. But again, we're corroborating a thing that is in your dream or in your nightmare. Well, I mean, yeah, he talked a little bit about obviously it being in a bed and sleep paralysis. But it sounded like some of these were seeing this guy awake. That's true. He was just at the bottom of the bed. Yeah. Although, you know, you're in bed. It's nighttime. You're sleepy. Yeah. Was it when you were awake or was it, you know, either side of being awake? Right. Have you ever seen anything like this while you're kind of sleepy or just woke up in the morning? No, I, th I do remember being a kid and I did grow up in a very old, creepy house. Um, and I think there is a certain age where you are uncomfortable with the dark, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. Uh, no, a little old. Yeah. No, when I was a little younger than that, maybe, where, you know, it's a storm, st it's a stormy night. The light from outside is hitting something in your room a little different. Um, we've all been caught off guard by the light hitting, let's say, a coat hanger. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, is that the hat man? Oh no, it's my coat. Right. Um, we've all had things like that. I've definitely looked in the room and been like, what is that? Oh, it's fine. It's I've fine. Never anything that the what is that lasts longer than a few seconds. Yeah, N not to the point where you think you see eyes and teeth and yeah. a little goblin man. It's more just like the the silhouette of an individual. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty similar. I've never seen anything like this before, so... I don't know. I love the theory that the tall hat man and the Alp could be the same person. Yeah. And I like hearing stories from our own audience. Uh, apologies that we missed this case because it is a great story that was emailed in. But um, yeah, I'm just not sure today if we have enough to push it over the line. So it's going to be a no from me this week. Oof. Well, I'm glad Rory's taking the lead because uh, I'm not sure what to make, but I think 
it's safer to say a no today. And I don't even have to worry about if he is real or not, because with the amount of crystals I'm packing, my dreams are going to be like Alcatraz. No one is getting in or out. And if he doesn't like the bracelets, the giant crystal cock will at least be enough of a kind of question mark over you as a person <laughs> that he'll probably just go to the next house. He's like, I don't, I'm not ready for this guy's dreams. Yeah. No way. But thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of This Paranormal Life. And as I said, a shout out to Trenton and Richard for emailing in about this case. Uh, one with a theory and one with their own story about witnessing the paranormal. If you do have your own stories that you want us to investigate, or you've had weird shit that actually happened to you, we want to hear about it. Send us an email at thisparanormallifepodcast at gmail.com. Did you know that there are hundreds of extra episodes of this podcast over on patreon.com? Because this show has crowdfunding where the audience gets to contribute to the podcast, and you get some amazing rewards over on patreon.com, such as extra episodes, cool merchandise, shout outs on the podcast, all for as little as five bucks a month. And you don't have to navigate to a web browser or anything, just open up your podcast app, wherever you are listening, you can find the link is there, uh, should be in the description of this podcast. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description of the video. It's the best way to support the show and ensure that we can keep making this silly podcast for many, many, many years to come. Uh, it's also a real cool place to engage with the community uh, over on Patreon. You know, people uh, post under all the episodes and chat with each other. We've got a Discord. Uh, it's a really cool place. So if you want to get a little bit more involved and support the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. And of course, one of those amazing rewards that you can get, as we mentioned, is a shout out at the end of the podcast. That's what we're going to do right now. So thank you to Anna Smith. Come on down to Anna's Bananas. We got every color of bananas. We have light green, dark green, normal green. That's what I like to lime hear. Lime green. Oh, yeah. And guess what? They're ready to eat. <laughs> Yeah, that's they right. Are prime. That's right. For too long, the banana industry has lied to you and said that bananas must be yellow or yellow with some brown spots in order for you to eat them. Well, no longer, my friend. Yeah. We are we are smashing down, ripping down the statues of society that have kept us eating overripe bananas for too long. And the nutritional benefits are clear to see. I think you can see from our beautifully blue eyes. Me and Rory have been reaping the health benefits of green bananas for some time now yes i i haven't um shit in days <laughs> but but yes of course but, but i think that's a good thing are, i think yeah. it's like the body is just even more efficient now mm, yeah i feel really weak as well like when i try and lift anything my tummy like, does hurt when i eat them but i think it's like again it's like it's giving my digestion a workout yeah it's putting it through training yeah. you know so we appreciate that anna for selling those green bananas thank you to the coin guy the coin guy, let me tell you, he's going to love it when he gets his Knight of the Commune coin. All right, because people might not know that this is an actual real thing you can get on Patreon. It is a real gold and silver coin with the This Paranormal Life Commune motto inscribed upon it and a, uh, a crest of the commune on the other side with two swords, one Rory, one Kit going through it. It's very cool. So if you are a guy who's all about coins... You're gonna love it when this thing turns up. I don't wanna panic this guy, but what is the coin guy gonna do in a cashless society? Yeah, well, don't tell him that. He's just gonna Does be- Does he know He's about to be just coming? the guy real soon. <laughs> there ain't gonna be <laughs> many gonna coins. Be a regular guy any day now. <laughs> and lastly, thank you to Anthony Prim. Anthony loves to look prim and proper. Nothing he likes more than a freshly crisp ironed shirt, freshly mm. pressed suit fresh shoes you know he puts it all on and then he's like okay time to go about my day and there's a bit of dust on on it in the bin it goes oh well, need a new freshly yeah. crisp shirt freshly pressed suit it's kind of wasteful like, okay gonna go about oh, i stepped in a puddle everything in the bin again he he's he a, it's slightly clothes. almost an ocd level but like because he loves it to be fresh right loves it to be clean fresh pressed anthony in the paranormal commune everyone kind of wears a sack yeah like an old potato sack that we cut holes in so it's not gonna be that prim and proper Ooh, 
It's it's gonna be a. You're just gonna have to get used to yeah, it. It's but just it's just a sack. It's you get used to it really quickly. Sense. Right. We'll, we'll we'll say you know it's you're gonna really love it by the end. Mm, he's gonna have to really change the way he views things, isn't he? <laughs> you are, but you get used to it. And in District Nine, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> oh, he's so, a nine. <laughs> he's oh, a niner. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Prim's a niner. <laughs> they call them niners because they are they're only gonna last nine months. Let's be honest. All right. Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Keep those crystals close. Have pleasant dreams, and we will see you next Tuesday for another paranormal tale. Bye bye. Made sure it was a big one. Oh, there you go, bud. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do it. I really want to, though. I really want to. Get a clean take. Oh, here we go. Damn it. That's another one of those Twitter accounts that like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not looking at that shit, bro. <laughs> too much, too much information you don't need. But like one of those Twitter accounts that was like, this like craziest moments in world history. They, they posted a video that was like the day Rey Mysterio took his mask off. It's like, and the crazy thing is I'm watching it like, that was pretty crazy. Damn. <laughs> I saw one the other day that was like, it was like, I can't believe this happened. Like to illustrate what a different place the world was all these years ago when the WWE got John Cena to announce mid wrestling match that we killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I was like, why did we think this was a good idea? Oh my God. It was wow. just so different. He's just like there in jean shorts with his shirt off. And, and like, like, we have neutralized Osama bin Laden. And everyone's like, Wah! it's I just like, what the f is going on.